Hi, I'm Jake Brattle. Welcome back to Panels. No, too much enthusiasm, Dougie. Hi, I'm Jake Brattle. That's better. Okay, we've got the panels all cut, painted, and Collins started the first bit of the next step, uh, which is he started installing the switches and the circuit breakers. And we've also got the USB socket in there because the next job is going to be wiring. And I've got a glamorous assistant to help me with this one. Oh, it's Dougie. Uh, Dougie, you're going to be learning how to wire yes. up a panel today. Yes, I am, Jake. Um, yeah. We've got the front and we've got the rear panel. I think we'll get you started on the rear panel because it should be a little bit easier. Uh, and in this mini tutorial, we're going to teach you how to solder. Great. Done any soldering before? Yes, a little bit. Oh, good. Not much. Well, in which case, I'll give you the soldering iron. We use aviation grade wire to provide the positive feed from both batteries into the master switch. Then we make a bus into the battery selector toggle switches for each instrument. From there, we wire to the corresponding circuit breaker and then finally off to the instrument. This setup allows complete control over which battery powers which instrument. The breaker is actually, these poles are numbered, so the input is one, the output is two. So if you want to cut three lengths, that sort of length. The first job, get yourself a decent set of strippers. Um, <laughs> why are you laughing? I didn't say anything. <laughs> you looked at me. I could just sense you. So the, the first job, get yourself a decent set of wire I strippers. Over there. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> For goodness sake, guys, how old are we? Uh, right. What you need is a decent strippers. Wire stripper. <laughs> <laughs> this is 16 gauge wire, so we go for the 16 gauge hole. And what I find often with aviation wire is that you have to go down a size because the insulation is so much thinner and stronger. So just go, I've just gone down a size and we're just trying to expose a section of wire without damaging the core inside. That's a really key bit. Now the first one actually needs to be quite long and I'll show you for why. Please, thank you. And then we'll get our first loop. We need to untwist the core. Untwist it. Is it left loose? That's it. I think I'm tightening it now. You are. Good. Once you've got it un unwound, I then splay the wire end. We're looking for two splayed ends like that. And I found the best method is to basically poke one through the other Ooh. as best you can, and then twist together. And what I find is in doing this, it basically makes it so easy to solder without needing a third hand, without needing someone to come and help you. you could, it just holds itself together. The soldering iron should now be hot. And you don't even need me to explain. No, I've done this so many times before. Apart from the fact I definitely haven't. Yeah, can you hold it? That, that does help. Actually, I'll hold it for the purposes of the demonstration. Oh, thank you so much. Otherwise, Dorian's going to struggle to see in it. As Dougie's doing here, really important to clean the tip of the soldering iron. Um, so usually a new piece of solder, clean it, and then a new piece of solder on the tip. That helps to transfer the heat to what you're soldering. And then bring the soldering iron and the solder like so. to the wire. That's it. And if you put the soldering iron behind the wire and then bring the solder up to it, Good. And then the important thing is once the solder starts to flow, is the, shot, the solder should only be applied to the wires, not to the soldering iron tip. Like so. And what you're looking for, that's good. What you're looking for is a nice shiny solder join with the wires sort of fully impregnated like that. What we'll do now that the soldering iron's hot is we'll tin all of the poles now. It um, saves you a bit of time later. Beautiful. How's that, Chip? Yep, that's good. Is that fantastic? Do you need me to compliment you on each one? Yes. Very good, Dougie. Keep it up. Oh, thank you. As we say, you just solder on. Okay. <laughs> Tough crowd. We can now cut to the solder being done. 
Uh, you've missed one pin, Dougie. Oh, fuck. I always heat shrink every solder join that I do, that I can. I will always heat shrink. And I find that's really important for the longevity of the, of the join. So all of our panels will always have a bit of heat shrink. And the heat shrink just needs to be long enough to cover the exposed bit of wire, plus four or five mil. Oh, and another top tip is cut or pre-cut all your heat shrink before you start using them. That way you can get them all exactly the same length and it will look really nice, neat and tidy. That's all of our heat shrink cut and really important thing to remember, one that we always forget and you will forget at home, put the heat shrink on before you do the solder join and then move it as far away from the join as possible because you don't want it to shrink too early while you're doing the solder join. Bring the wire to the terminal and then just heat the wire you'll find the wire will, will melt and then it should melt the terminal and then melt onto the terminal. And we've got our first join done. So that's good, we're happy with that one. We can push the heat shrink down and then we need the heat gun. So a nice low heat setting, Just you want it just warm enough so it'll do the job. Beautiful. I'd say that's heat shrunken. I couldn't have done that better myself. We are going to do another join. Mm -hmm. So these two loops are going to be joined together onto this pin down here. Oh, fantastic. So we need to strip the ends and do the joiny thing. Exactly. You know what you're doing now? Uh, okay, I made that, made that look really easy. Yeah. <laughs> than, it, than it was. There's a bit of a knack. It's more of a flicking motion. It's more of a squeeze and flick. Squeeze mm. and flick. <laughs> Squeeze and flick. It's telling me the same thing. I've got my f what? And then, what do we always make sure we remember? The heat shrink. Why is it so difficult? Explain to the person at home how, how they should do it correctly without making it look like they're having a seizure. So, it does, it does take a lot of practice to be fair, um, but I just squeeze firmly. That's cut the wire and now you just pull it off. Difficult to get in. What do you think? Uh, I think that's a pretty bad job. Yeah. Um, it's actually not bad at all, to be fair. Oh. You can see it's fully saturated through to the terminal. The wire has, yeah, it's actually quite a nice join. Can we do that take again? Okay. Take a look. Yeah, that's a good join. You can see it's fully impregnated the wire, it's fully um, melted onto the terminal. Looks good, feels nice and strong. Fantastic. And now you just gotta shrink the heat shrink. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm guessing for the audience at home, not for me, yep. obviously, because I know exactly what I'm doing, mm. but I would, I would say that you heat it back up again and take it off. Perfect, yeah, just desolder it. Once the panel's wired up, I rebuild the panel on the bench as far as possible, so refit as many of the instruments as you can. And then, when it comes to refitting to the aircraft, take care on panels where you can't get access to the back of the panel once it's fitted. So on this rear ash panel, I had to take extreme care, making sure the pneumatics didn't kink. You join us, just as we're about to power up the panel for the first time, um, it's a momentous moment for any panel install that we do. Colin, what have you sort of found the most challenging elements of, of this particular glider? Uh, well, with this particular one, uh, routing the cables was a bit, bit of an issue. Um, unlike a lot of pure aircrafts, this one's got um, obviously the uh, electronic um, water ballast dump on there. Um, so there's a little bit more wiring going on than usual. Routing the cables through this part of the fuselage was quite challenging given the number of wires in there and the 
Only other sort of real issue we found was on the rear panel, given the lack of depth that we had in the back here, uh, we weren't able to install any of the instruments um, with the panel sort of uh, in situ. Everything had to be uh, put together and then installed um, with limited amount of space. But thankfully that's done. Front one's done as well. Cables are routed. Um, and then, yeah, moment of truth, as you said, so. Do you want to be honest? No, I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to edit that out. <laughs> That's making noises, which is good. Yeah. Pilot. So what we do for the test is we just try and turn everything on, make sure that everything's booting up. So the LX is booted up, the audio is working, the Vario in the front's working. Set so elevation. We'll just check the rear one, we'll check the rear LX is booted up, which it has. And the rear Vario is working, which is good. The Flam's booted up. So the, the flam in this glider is connected to the LX9050. So when the 9050 boots up, the flam turns on and we can see that the flam's um, just going through its boot cycle now and it'll start looking for satellites in a minute. We'll be making sure we get green lights um, before, it, before we're happy that um, everything's working properly. Uh, just turn the radio on, that's looking good and normal, no error messages. And the USB power supply in the front and the rear are both lit up, which is good. So they're both working. Next job is to test all of the radio's functions. We're then gonna test all of the LX functions, make sure that the stick's working. Um, then we've got to finish the pneumatic installation uh, in the front panel. Then once that's done, we can do a full pneumatic test both of the entire glider, make sure there's no leaks. And then we can do a full electronic test, make sure that both battery line circuits work. Uh, and then test all of the other electronic systems, such as the undercarriage warning system, the water dump ballast system. Um, once that's all done, we're happy. We can then put the seat pans back in, rebuild the glider and get it out the door. This panel rebuild job has brought this ash from the early 2000s into the 2020s. For the Syndicate, it will feel like a brand new glider. With the LX9050s, it will now have all of the upgradability and connectivity of the latest and greatest equipment on the market. In future, we'll be making more videos on how this equipment connects together. But until then, check the manuals as they go into quite a lot of detail. We hope you enjoyed this mini-series on panel rebuilds. If you did, please like and subscribe, that way you won't miss out on future videos. And if you'd like to support us on future projects, please consider supporting us on our Patreon.